Hi scholars, welcome back to Rump, chapter 29. Guessing games for finding names. Sheep shanks, crook shanks, spindle shanks. I allowed Opal to rattle off any ridiculous name she wanted. The fact that my name actually began with Rump still hadn't gotten through. Either way, it would all come to nothing, but at least it kept her from crying. Ghibli shanks, wooly shanks, pepper shanks. The door opened and the miller entered. Opal crumpled up her list of silly names and jumped away from me, but the miller took no notice of her. He went right to the gold and started to refill his sack. I think we will exceed the king's expectations, even if we do not give him all the gold. He laughed wickedly as he stuffed the sack with gold. Yes, he'll never notice the difference. Opal glared at her father. What makes you think you can keep any of it? I could tell him, you know, I am the queen. The miller smiled. You could tell him just as easily as I could tell him it was not you who spun the gold. How do you think the king would take that? Opal clamped her mouth shut and looked away. The miller cast his gaze on me and I quickened my foot on the treadle. Then he left. As soon as the door had snapped shut, Opal spouted off another trio of names. Bender shanks, spinder shanks, thistle shanks. She went through a hundred shanks names and continued to speak to servants and messengers through the crack of the floor as they handed her new lists. Some of the names had made me glad I was called Rump. Who would want to name their child Peabody? I'd rather be a Rump than a Peabody. Opal kept busy with the names, unless the miller was present, and when Archie needed feeding, she seemed quite peeved to have to stop. She had become so obsessed with finding my name, she forgot why she was looking for it in the first place. In the meantime, the miller was piling the gold in little stacks and counting them. Frederick and Bruno helped him, but the miller slapped their hands if they lingered too long. Sometimes they'd watch me spin, with a kind of awe, and I almost thought they were admiring me, but their eyes were only on the gold. Red tried to communicate with me at first, making faces and shaking her head this way and that, but after a while, she gave up and sank into herself, just staring into the fire and sleeping in small stretches. Oswald gave Red and me stale bread and moldy cheese to eat, but Red didn't eat any, and I worried I stuffed my food in my mouth and spun faster. Even if it was vile, I needed the energy to finish my task. Opal continued guessing names for me. Aldbrick, Herberbrick, Zittelmiger? That is not my name, I said and continued to spin. With the whir, whir, whir of the wheel, I heard rumple, 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 trapped, trapped, trapped. Ferdinand, Fernandino, Ingard, that is not my name. Opal began to despair and my guilt deepened. I had given her false hope. Maybe I'd given myself false hope, as if there really could be more to me than just a tangled mess. Whir, 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 rumple, 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 trapped, trapped, trapped. As the second day drew to a close, Opal rocked back and forth on the floor again and the boards creaked and lifted. Creak, snap, creak, snap. A few times I actually saw people through the cracks in the floorboards moving around in the room below. I heard the sound of chatter and recognized a familiar face. It was Martha, the cook who had helped me when I fell out of the tower. It was sort of funny that I was right above her now. I strained my ears to catch any good gossip she might have but I couldn't hear well enough to make sense of it. The gold was now stacked higher than the straw far above my head, but heaps and heaps of straw still remained. I couldn't see the end of it. And once I finished, I knew the miller would find new ways to manipulate me. There had to be a way out. Red had said there was a way. Her granny had said so too. There was something I was missing. I just knew it, but I couldn't see what. I couldn't think in this small space filled with straw and gold. I needed air, 
I need to rest. I closed my eyes and put my head down on the wheel. I would only rest for a minute. Creak, snap, creak, snap. My head jerked up at the sound. Opal was rocking back and forth again, lifting the floorboards. I looked around, dazed. Gold and straw were everywhere, and out the window, I could see it was dark. I had fallen asleep. The second day was gone. How late was it? I lifted my arms to stretch. I hadn't moved all day from the spinning wheel, not even to answer the cause of nature. Nature was screaming at me, and so was my brain. I had this strange feeling that I'd just woken up from a dream, but I couldn't remember what it was. I was thinking of destiny and names, the witch of the woods and stiltskins, my aunts and the rumples, the trolls and their magical horde, the apple tree, my mother. There were ideas flying around inside my head, answers, but they couldn't get out in this room. My brain needed open space. I have to go outside, I announced. Nature calls. Can't it wait, said Oswald. I've been holding it for a long time. I might have an accident and get it all over the straw. And I'm not sure I can make gold out of pea straw. The miller's eyes flashed, but he waved me away. Frederick Bruno, take our friend outside. Make sure he's protected. The brother sat up and smiled malevolently. They had done very little the past two days besides watching me spin gold or run mindless errands for the miller. They were restless and bored, and that was a dangerous state for Frederick and Bruno. Yes, said Frederick, it'll be our pleasure. And take the baby with you, said the miller. I would hate for him to get lonely. He laughed heartily and Opal whimpered. I gritted my teeth. This would not be helpful. Bruno untied me and I hoisted the baby's basket in my arms. When we were outside, Frederick and Bruno hovered next to me as I relieved myself by a tree. I don't need your help. It's for your safety, said Frederick. We wouldn't want you to get eaten by trolls. Trolls. A little egg cracked in my brain. I knew some trolls. Trolls that could smell magic and hoarded it and guarded a poison apple tree. A stiltskin. No, I said, that would be awful. The egg cracked all the way open, and suddenly my idea emerged. It was a little crazy and dangerous, perhaps, but I had to do something. You know, I said, considering my words carefully, there are other things out there besides trolls just beyond the gates. A little ways in the eastern woods, I've actually hidden a stash of gold. Gold? Bruno licked his lips as if I'd just said lamb chops. Gold, I said. I can't carry it all on my own, but if you'll help me, I'll split it with you. Their eyes glittered. Bruno nodded, nodded but Frederick pulled him back. How do we know you're not tricking us? Just so you can run away. I pointed to the castle. Red's still in there. I wouldn't run away. And besides, it's dangerous in those woods. There might be wolves or witches or trolls out there. I just thought I might have a better chance if you were with me because you're soldiers now. I could wait until I'm done with your father, but then he might find out about it and want the gold all to himself. Frederick whispered something in Bruno's ear and a greedy grin spread across his face. We'll help you, they said at the same time. But we get most of it, said Frederick. There's two of us and one of you, and what do you need with gold? I don't need much, I said. Frederick pushed me to start moving. You'll get as much as you're worth, but...